Shalom, 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 Yashar Allah, Hallelujah, Shema Yashar Allah, Yahawa Alahayna, Yahawa Akhad, Wahabta At Yahawa Alahayaka, Bakal Labaka, Wabakal Napashka, Wabakal Maadka. Hail Israel, Yahawa our power, Yahawa is one, and you shall love Yahawa your power with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your might so they said that black people got souls so that's a whole lot of love and we're supposed to be showing the most high he didn't give you that soul for nothing um i'm doing uh i'm teaching a tour for our people uh specifically targeting the blacks hispanics and the indians native peoples in north central south america and the caribbean the cd and the shd in pakistan and in india and the kafirs over in sri lanka uh, some of the Igbo over in Nigeria, the Kukuya, some of them over in Kenya, and some of the Ashanti over in Ghana. Ba Ghana. Basically, the 12 tribes of Israel scattered to the four corners of the earth, predominantly located in North, Central, South America, and the Caribbean, but also in all the other places I named too. Uh, I am a Torah teacher, a judge, and an elder with Banya Yashar Allah, working under and with the government of Yashar Allah, Mashara Yashar Allah. Our symbol is the menorah. Our colors are red, purple, and blue. Our God is Yahweh, his son, and our savior, is Yahawashai Hamashayak. All right, so we're gonna start with the uh, the first day Torah parasha of Noah or of Nach, which is Noah from Genesis chapter six, verses nine through 22. Going over Noah's burden, okay? This is Noah's burden, which also is a blessing for Noah because now he's gonna be the last person, you know, the oldest person He's going to be on the earth, but now when he's on the earth, the most high about to kill the whole earth. All the people on the earth about to get killed, and only Noah and his family are going to be left. Uh, excuse the noises. I do apologize for that, but I got a little bit of congestion uh, going on. Um, quick note, if you know you're supposed to be keeping the Torah and you're claiming the nation of Israel, Yashad Allah or Yisrael, and you're claiming the God of Israel, whether you say Yahweh, Yahuwah, uh, Yahweh, or you want to say Ahaya, whatever you want to say, and you're not keeping, obeying the Torah, then you are a traitor. And if the time comes and you still uh, caught slipping in that um, um, state of mind, then the Most High is going to have a bad problem with you. So if you know you're supposed to keep the Torah and walking the commandments, stop playing games with the Most High. Be real. Stop being a traitor. Stop being a coward. Stop acting like a punk. Do what the Bible says to do. Do what the Torah, the law says to do, or suffer the consequences, you know, from the Most High. Now do what he said to do, and whatever negative consequences come on this earth, deal with it now. Because you sure don't want to face the wrath and the fury and the judgment of the Most High for breaking his commandment. So let's just, you know, make that clear right now. So we're going to jump right into it. Uh, we went over to Adam all the way down to Noah. We went into Enoch. And we talked about how the book of Enoch was a load of crap. We talked about how the book of Enoch was garbage. And we talked about who the real Nephilim were. And we talked about who uh, were the uh, the sons of the Alahayim, sons of God. And we talked about the sons of men. So we went over all of these things. If you missed it, you can go back and catch the uh, the, uh, the the parasha, the first parasha of the Bible, which is Bereshit, Genesis uh, chapter 1, verse 1 through chapter 6, verse 8. Check that out. It's on my uh, It's on Facebook right here. And it's also on uh, YouTube uh, for Banya uh, Yashadala on uh, YouTube. 
just put in, you know, uh, better sheet and then put in um, better sheet and put in Yahweh. And it should come up. We're the only ones uh, out there that are you know, grouping that together like that because the other brothers in Israel have other topics that they need to teach, other breakdowns, other debates, other points that they need to make consistently and regularly outside the Torah. But me, you know, this is my foundation after Yahweh Shai Hamashiach. All right, so we're going to jump right into it. Um, here's the words right here. By the way, the website that I'm using, um, you can go to this website. I'll put it down in the notes on the uh, on the Facebook page. Um, but if you're in a YouTube page, um, it's going to be um, BibleHub.com. All right, BibleHub.com, and it has the interlinear. And, of course, the interlinear is based on the Masoretic text, which is not actually the best translation of the Old Testament or of the Torah, but that's besides the point. There's better Hebrew and Greek translations, older than and better than the Masoretic translation. So the Masoretic translation is not the God of all Hebrew Bibles, all right? It's not even second, but it's what we have, and it's pretty, you know, uh, it's, it's pretty accurate uh, compared to other older translations, so we're not going to trip on it too much. When there is a major difference, you know, I'll go ahead and point it out to you, as well as telling you where that difference comes from and what source I'm using to correct uh, an error. Uh, we saw an error that we see. So once again, uh, Prakash uh, Bhagashandra, a uh, namaste, namaste, the brother over in uh, in India. How you doing, brother? All right, much love to you. So now we're gonna start with chapter six, verse nine. Okay, here we are, right here. These are the generations of Noah. A man righteous. Uh, blameless, that means like complete and whole, blameless, um, he was in his generations, all right, with the Most High walked Noah. So just like Enoch walked with the Most High, Noah walked with the Most High, so the Allah High would commune with him, give him higher knowledge, understanding, and he was, righteous means that he walked in obedience to the orders that Adam received from Yahweh. Those instructions passed on down to Noah. Okay? So I said he walked with Allah Hayim. Of course, the Allah Hayim being the spirits of the Most High, Yahweh Shai, Hamashiach, who the world called Jesus Christ, and also the holy angels. Okay? And beget Noah three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Now, Shem is the father of the blacks in America, the Hispanics, Latinos, Native Americans, He's the father of some of the Igbo and Ashanti, some of the Kukuya. He's the father of the Sidi. He's the father of the Shidi and the Kafirs in Pakistan, India, and Sri Lanka. Okay. Now, Shim is also the father of the Arabs, Chinese, the, uh, the Japanese, the East Indians. So he's their father. Ham is basically the father of the African peoples. Okay in east west south and north africa mainly north africa with the brown skin people not the arab that invaded now Japhet, he is the father of the ancient european people the brown skin people with the straight and the curly hair straight nose some of them have wide noses they migrated into the pacific island areas all right so that's shem ham and Japhet. we the people that were in the Americas already, when the white man divided, decided to divide, conquer the Americas, North, Central, South America, and also the blacks that came to America in slavery, we are descendants of Shem. We dwelt in the land of Ham after we got kicked out of Israel by uh, Titus, the general of Rome, in 70 AD, roughly, uh, went down to North Africa, uh, Elephantine, 
further south and further west over time after we went north and spread out and North Africa became, you know, uh, you know, populated in that area, then went further south. The the Twadegs, the, the original people of Mar Martania, we went into Mali, okay. Um, the Moors, those were all Israelites that were in Africa, that, in the land of Ham, that actually come from Shem, okay. So now verse 11, and uh, was corrupt the earth before Alahayim. And was filled the earth with violence. So the earth was filled with violence. So all people wanted to do was wickedness, cruelty, injustice. Why? Why was this happening? Because Adam and Kawa basically opened Pandora's box, if you will. Not to be leaning on Greek mythology to make my metaphor, but they opened Pandora's box. And when that happened, they bit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. So they knew the knowledge of evil. So that knowledge filled the earth and the wicked cleaved unto, everybody basically was cleaving unto wickedness now. Noah and his family, the only ones that were cleaving unto the righteous. All right? So it ain't how big your camp is or how many followers or how many likes you got. It's really how obedient you are to the Most High and the Torah at the end of the day. That's how the race is going to be measured by obedience. Okay? So the, uh, it's violence in the earth and wickedness. So look, Allahayim, which is God. God in Hebrew right here is Allahayim. Uh, and look, Allahayim, upon the earth. And indeed, or and behold, that says behold. This Hana, says, it says behold. They got in, indeed. And behold was corrupt, for had corrupted all flesh uh, their way on the earth. So all mankind was uh, corrupt uh, on the earth, all right? Corrupt, destroyed, wicked, decay. So now man was going into a lower state. So the Nephilim or the Napoleon had fallen. So now mankind is going into even a lower, a lower state, falling even lower, corrupted, becoming more and more... Um, more and more wicked, more evil, more decayed, okay? So look, Allah upon the earth and indeed corrupt. It was corrupt for all flesh, all right? Now, notice it says flesh. So when people come trying to say, oh, the fallen angels, blah, 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 there's no fallen angels. That's a lie. It's a false doctrine. It's a lie. There's no, no fallen angels, all right? I don't care what you read in the book of Enoch. The book of Enoch is not a true righteous holy book inspired by the most high for the sake of good upon the earth all right hope i made that clear so it says all flesh but sharp all right so now these fallen angels did not exist all right so it was man's wickedness following after the serpent satan with the knowledge from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil that's what made man get corrupted was that knowledge of evil that the generation inherited from our father, Adam. It, it affected Cain, it affected Lamech, and then it affected all of the people on the earth, except for Noah, all right, except for Noah, all right? So their flesh was corrupted because of the, the, the consumption of that fruit of the, um, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. That's why everybody started tripping out, doing all types of evil and wickedness and perverse things. Um, and said Allah to Noah, La Nach, the end of all flesh has come before me. Okay? For it's filled the earth with violence through them. And behold, I will destroy them with to a toward the earth. So most I'm going to the most high saying I'm going to destroy the earth, destroy the earth. Meaning I'm going to destroy the occupants um, of the earth. All right. So the most high said the end. All right. The end of all flesh has come uh, to my face. What does he mean? The end of flesh. What's the end of flesh? That means that all flesh now deserves to die 
because of their wickedness and because of their sins. The wages of sin is death. So it says the end of the all flesh has come before me, meaning all flesh is reaching the height of evil and wickedness and destruction upon the earth. So that's what he's saying. All nations, all people are doing evil on the earth now. So most High said, you know, it's time the evil is coming before me. All right. That's what he said. He said, it's filled the earth with violence. All right. Wrong, cruelty, injustice, wickedness, all type of perversion, like it is now, through them. Now, behold, I will destroy uh, the earth. So most High said he's going to destroy the earth. All right. Make yourself an ark of wood gopher. Now, what's interesting, now remember now, the whole earth is still Pangaea. Now, there is a species of wood in North America called gopher wood, but we don't know when that wood was named. And the wood didn't necessarily have to come from ancient Israel or that area, because remember, the whole earth was one. So the arrangement of life and trees and their habitat was different then. The earth was all one big uh, plot of, 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 of real estate. There was no division in continents, no oceans to cross to get to another land. Everything was one land. We see that in Genesis. The division happens when um, Nimrod starts to do his evil and the earth is divided in the days of Eber. And that's why he names his son Palag or Peleg, which means division. So the earth is all one. So that's why you look on the map. South America fits into Africa. And in North America can kind of heave around a little bit. So it all was one. It all was one piece of uh, one piece of land, right? It was one piece of land, all right? So the most I say, you got to go for wood, uh, make rooms in the ark, and cover it inside and out with pitch. Now this pitch is like um, is like asphalt, uh, so to speak. It's like asphalt, and this is how you shall make it: three hundred cubits length of the ark. Now, this is roughly 450 feet. 50 cubits the width. Now, this is roughly 75 uh, feet. 30 cubits height. And this is roughly uh, uh, 45 feet. Now, if you notice, everything that I'm reading, if you multiply the cubits by 1.5, you'll get the feet. Because the cubit is roughly half of a yard or 18 inches, a foot and a half. So, if we take that... Uh, uh, if we take 300 times 1.5 is 300 plus half of 300, which is 300 plus 150, which is, uh, which is 450. Okay. If we take this 50, it's 50 plus half of 50, which is 50 plus 25, which is 75 feet. And last but not least, if we take this 30 right here, uh, 30 cubits high, we take that 30, cut it in half, which is 15. 30 plus 15 is what? 45, right? So 30 times 1.5 is going to be what? 45. 30 times 1.5 is going to be 45. So it's 30 times itself, which is 30, or times 1, which is 30, then times half of that, which is going to give you half of 30, which is 15. 30 plus 15 is 45, okay? But the most I said, <clears throat> he said, uh, a window shall you make for the ark, and to a cubit you shall finish from above the door. So the most I said, put a pretty little window on the ark that's half a foot, half a foot. I mean, a foot and a half, foot and a half, foot and a half. All right. A window. And the door of the ark in its side set lower, uh, second and third decks you shall make it. So it had a second and a third deck, so three levels. And I... Behold, and bringing a flood. That means water. Remember, before that time, I'm bringing water, flood of water on the earth to destroy all flesh which is in it. Breath of life from under heaven. <clears throat> so remember the heavens, the firmament under here, the Most High said, anything that has any skin or flesh is going to be destroyed. 
That's in, that's that's everything on the planet Earth. Everything on the planet Earth. Somebody might say, "Well, the book of Enoch, the angels, they didn't have flesh." Okay, you want to be silly like that? Okay, well, how did they get spark? What's that spark man out of? You see what I'm saying? So people are just silly. So the most I destroy every living thing. All right, all flesh which is which uh, Bawa in it is breath of life from under heaven. Everything it says all, all which is Baratiza on the earth is going to die. Everything on earth is going to die. Is going to perish. Expire. Times up. So that kind of makes it clearer. It says every living thing that's on the earth is going to expire. No matter what its origin is, it's going to expire. Okay. Verse 18. But I will establish my what? My barayat, my covenant with you. And you shall go into the ark, you and your sons and your wife, Ashathka, and wives of your sons with you. So that's eight people we have. We have Ham, Shem, Japheth, and Noah. We have Noah's wife, and we have the, the three the wives of Noah's three sons. That's eight people, right? So we have eight people that are going to make it through the slug because everybody else is evil and wicked upon the earth. All right, so now verse 19. And of every living thing of all flesh, two of every kind, all right, shall you bring into the ark to keep them alive uh, with you, male and female, they shall be. Now it says two right here, two. Um, Shanayam, this two is talking about two of every unclean animal. So two of every squirrel, two of every vulture, two of every uh, walrus, all right? Probably amphibians were on the boat too. Two of every um, every type of what? Two of every uh, fox. So every animal that we cannot eat, there was two. The animals that we could eat, uh, there was only, there was seven. Seven males and seven females. We see that when we go into uh, Genesis chapter 7, verse 1 and 2, which we're going to do tomorrow. All right. So he says, bring these animals into um, the ark. Okay. He says, you shall bring uh, the baya'a. You shall bring uh, into the ark, male and female. Verse 20, of the birds after their kind and of animals after their kind of all creeping things on the earth after its kind two of every kind will come with you to keep alive to be kept alive so that's two birds and two animals the things that creep on the earth all right so even like the little things uh, uh, creep on the earth so two of everything uh, came this is a good chapter everything's pretty you know everything's pretty straightforward um, verse 21, and you shall take for yourself of all food that is eaten, okay? And you shall gather to yourself, and they shall be for you and for them, walaham, and for them food. So he brought in uh, food for the animals and food for themselves, him and the other people also, okay? It says, thus did Wayaish, Wayaisha, Wayaish, and did Noah all, as all that commanded him, Allahayim. So he did. So Noah did everything that the Allahayim told him to do. Um, he got these animals, he put them inside of the ark. And when he put them inside the ark, um, he got the food for the ark, the animals are in the ark. And the ark was 45, was uh, 340 feet, uh, 450 feet long. It was uh, 75 feet wide. 
and it was 45 feet tall and had three stories. It has three stories, all right? And it had two of every unclean animal um, in the ark, okay? And then when you go, um, when you go into, we're going to bring this out probably again, but when you go into the book of um, the wisdom of Solomon, okay, it talks about wisdom. You go into the wisdom of Solomon, um, chapter 10, and you read verse, um, verse uh, four. Okay. Let's go here. Uh, see if I can get there. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 10. All right, let's go. Well, now I don't have the. Uh, okay, so Wisdom of Solomon. Uh, can't get to it right now, but Wisdom of Solomon chapter 10, verse 4. It says, for whose cause the earth being drowned with the flood, wisdom again preserved it and directed the course of the righteous in a piece of wood of small value. So showing you how uh, wisdom is what was with uh, Noah and wisdom was actually directing the, the piece of wood, which is the ark that Noah was in. So it was wisdom that was guiding it, make sure it didn't get flooded, making sure it hit the waves uh, just right. So she, wisdom, the spirit of wisdom, was literally, um, was literally um, um, moving and guiding the wood, all right? So this is uh, Wisdom of Solomon chapter 14, um, verse, uh, what is this? Verse six, for in the old time also, when the proud giants perished, the hope of the world governed by thy hand escaped in a weak vessel and left to all ages a seed of generations. For blessed is the wood whereby righteousness cometh. Okay. So the Most High is saying that that wood was blessed and that wood was used to preserve those, even though the wood was weak, it was used to preserve life on the earth so that we would have, um, we would have further generations, all right? We would have further uh, generations. So, but now, now you're dealing with water, the Most High says that um, he's going to bring a, um, um, he's going to bring a flood. Right, he's gonna bring a flood. So now, with this flood, in the book of John, chapter seven, verse thirty-eight, it says, "He that believeth on me, as the Scripture hath said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water." So the living water from Yahweh is gonna come from our bellies when we believe on Him as the scripture said, and that's going to provide nourishment, direction, and guidance for other people, all right, and, and lead other people to Hamashiach, which is why he told the woman at the well, if you drink of this water that I have for you, you will never thirst again, meaning that I'm going to satisfy your desire and your need for a righteous foundation. That's why Paul tells us in, in 1, Corinthians, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, he tells us that other foundation can no man lay other than that which is laid, which is Yahweh Shai HaMashiach, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 11. So Yahweh Shai is the foundation, and no other foundation can be laid besides uh, uh, Yahweh Shai HaMashiach. Okay, so that's pretty much, believe it or not, that's the Torah portion, you know, for this uh, day. You know, it's not really... It's not a lot, you know, we have to really deal with, this is milk. This is milk. We have to deal with this milk right here 
you know, before we get into the um, a lot of the meat in the scriptures. All right now, there's a lot of meat that we all saw already in Genesis chapter one, chapter two, and in uh, and in chapter three. We saw a lot of a lot of meat. All right. So, but this milk is the basic foundation. So, Most High does not deal. What happened to all the halfway people? All the people that said, "Oh, my job got me doing this for the Sabbath." What happened to them? They got killed. Same thing gonna happen now. If you ain't with the Most High, you ain't solidly on uh, or obeying Him, then you're gonna be a casualty of war. Like Rakim said, you're gonna be a casualty of war. All right. So. That's that. Um, I'm in the Torah portion on that note. We went into a little bit of wisdom and wisdom of Solomon. And then we went into a little bit of uh, uh, Yahweh Shai in the book of um, uh, John. All right. So with all of these things, you know, we're dealing with Noah. Noah is an example of persevering through obedience to the laws, commandments, and statutes of the Most High, um, of Yahweh. All right. And then he got that reward. That reward was that he made it through the destruction. And those of us that obey the commandments of the Most High now, our reward is going to be that we make it through the destruction that the Most High Yahweh is going to bring upon Mexico, bring upon America, bring upon Jamaica, Cuba, Colombia. All the nations going to face the wrath of the Most High, particularly the Gentile Edomite nations that don't walk uh that that walk totally contrary and have a much higher price to pay because of what they've done to the uh to the chosen people of Yahweh, which is the blacks, Hispanics, and Indians in North, Central, South America, and the Caribbean, and some of the Israelites scattered into India, East and West Africa, as the black people that were oppressed in, in slavery and captivity and migrated to those uh different areas. All right, so that's about it. Shem, Ham, and Japheth, we come from Shem. The blacks and the Hispanics, Latinos that were in the Americas come from Shem. The ones that's in the, uh, uh, over in the Canary Islands and Sao Tome and Principe, Cape Verde, they come from Shem. A lot of people that fled into West Africa during before slavery come from Shem. Uh, some of the people are still keep have their identity in East and West Africa. So th that's who Shem's children are. Ham is basically dealing with your uh garden variety african okay your indigenous native africans come from ham and jafet remember jafet means expansion or to enlarge but it also means um it also means uh it also means uh means beautiful also all right so jafet is the people it was the ancient peoples in the Mediterranean uh, islands, um, but they migrated there. Or right about now, they are in the Carib. They are in the uh, Pacific Islands. All right, the Pacific Islands. That's where Jafet is now. Some people, you know, I know uh, uh, the brothers. A lot of brothers have lied and so oh, they're over here in South America. Um, Chile and Argentina, that's not enough talent. They're all one people, you know, one, I'm not gonna get into it, but South America is the most Southern inhabited part of the earth. Chile has the longest stretch of Western coastline of any nation in the world. Contingious, you know, any, um, you know, uninterrupted coastline of any nation in the entire world, including a murder, cut, cut, cut. All right. So I thank you all for um, listening. Um, we're all about that Torah. Torah and Yahweh Shai, which is the so-called black man. Shalom Laka, Regalia Dawada. Um, so we finishing up now. Uh, Shemai Yasharallah, Yahawa Alahaina, Yahawa Akad, Wahapta at Yahawa Alahayaka, Bakal Labaka, Wabakal Napashka, Wabakal Maatka. Hail Israel, Yahawa our power, Yahawa is one, and you shall love Yahawa your power with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your might. 
All right. So that's the Torah reading for the, the day. Uh, check it out. Remember, strive after obedience and righteousness. That's what the whole story of the Bible is about, really. Loving your Howard, loving your neighbor, doing the right thing, no matter what the crowd is doing, no matter what price you have to pay, always doing the right thing in private and in, 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 in secret and in public. So if you know you're supposed to keep the commandments and you ain't doing that, you a sucker, you a chump, you a punk, you a mark, all right, you a buster, all right? If you know you're supposed to keep the commandments and you're breaking commandments, all right, you're the lowest level of man that the Most High ever created. That's why the Messiah said if you know to keep the commandments, if you keep the commandments, if you teach people to break the commandments and you break them, you should be called least in the kingdom. So the kingdom regards you as nothing, as very little. He didn't know if to do good and do it or not. To him, it is sin or evil. All right. So you know to keep the commandments. Keep the commandments that were given to Moses. Now remember, just so we, there's no misunderstanding. You want to talk about color and appearances. God is black. The person you call Jesus is black. Moses is black. Joseph and Mary are black. Peter is black. Daniel is black. Ezekiel, Jeremiah are black. Okay, Joshua with Moses, he was Puerto Rican. But he's probably a dark brown skin. We don't know how he looked, all right? But he's so-called Puerto Rican, all right? So the Puerto Ricans, Mexicans, Cubans, those are Israelites. And the blacks that came to the Americas in slavery those also are Israelites, one nation, one family, different tribes. All right, so it's about to get real out here. Torah, the Torah revolution is starting. All right, so if you ain't walking that Torah, you know, you're going to get called out. You can't be a leader of Israel if you ain't walking in your own constitution, man. That's a what? That's a traitor. That's a traitor. You're going against your own God, your own constitution, your own people. You'll do anything if your back is to the wall. If you ain't true to the game, if you ain't keeping the commandments of the Torah, man, you ain't true to the game. You a fake. You a phony. You pose it, man. You oppose it. If you ain't walking the commandments, you know you're supposed to do it. We can't trust you, bro. For real. We can't trust you because you fake, you phony, and you want a coward spirit, man. You're supposed to be willing to do what the most high your God tell you to do. No matter what price you got to pay, man. That's like saying you got a, a limit to obedience. You'll obey the most high long as it's easy. But if the white man put you in chain, or if he, if he tell you you're going to take the job away from you, if you if he tell you that um, you might lose your house, you'd be like, oh, man, I can't, I can't obey your commandments, Yahweh. My job is more important, man. All right? So don't be no chump. No sucker, man. Start doing these commandments and stop talking. Stop talking this talk, man. All this talking and teaching that brothers is doing, it don't mean nothing if you ain't walking in commandments, man. You're just wasting your breath, man. That's what Paul told you in 1 Corinthians chapter 3. He told the Corinthians, you know, be careful what you build upon because your work might get burned up. The greatest, the people that the kingdom calls the greatest are those that do the commandments and those that teach the commandments point blank in the story hashtag.com all right so shalom lakam i'm signing off again all right uh all praise to yahweh bashem hamashiach yahweh shah all right so the same way it was in the days of noah that's how it's gonna be uh in the end the earth was full of violence most i gonna destroy the earth again this time it's gonna be destroyed by fire First time it was by water. This time it's going to be by fire. And he's going to deliver his people from that destruction. All right. So all praise to Yahweh, uh, Basham, Hamashiach, Yahweh Shai. Um, Shalom, Nakam, Hallelujah.